The function of the heart is to pump blood all over the body. The heart gets deoxygenated blood from the body through the superior and inferior vena cava that go into the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart then sends the blood to the lungs where it gets oxygenated and then returns back to the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart is responsible for pumping blood all over the body. This is a very important job, one that actually keeps us alive because the blood that is sent all over the body has oxygen and nutrients that our cells need. So how does the heart keep its rhythm so that the atria contract at the same time and the ventricles contract at the same time and the heart keeps beating so we can stay alive? In this video, we are going to learn just that by taking a closer look at the conduction system of the heart. Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa, and this is my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. Before we start today's video, I want to take a minute and ask for your support. If you are finding value in these easy to understand biological videos and want to ensure that they keep coming your way, I encourage you to become a part of our community by hitting that subscribe button. Your support fuels this channel's mission to make biological concepts engaging and easy to understand. Thank you for being a crucial part of our scientific journey together. The heart has four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. As I just mentioned before, the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs. The blood comes back into the heart on the left side and then the left side of the heart pumps blood throughout the body. The heart itself is made of cardiac muscle tissue. This tissue is similar to skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle cells, or fibers, are shorter and uninucleate. Cardiac muscle cells connect to one another in areas called intercalated discs. This is where there is a thickening of the sarcolemma or plasma membrane where the two cells come together. These discs contain different junctions, including desmosomes, which hold the fibers together, and gap junctions, which allow the muscle cells to conduct action potentials to each other. This is very important in how the heart works. The source of electrical activity in the heart is through specialized cardiac muscle fibers called autorhythmic fibers. These specialized fibers are self-excitable. They can repeatedly and rhythmically generate action potentials that trigger heart contractions. These fibers are even able to continue stimulating the heartbeat even after it is removed from the body, for example, while performing a transplant. Action potentials propagate throughout the entire cardiac conduction system. This allows the muscles along its pathway to contract simultaneously. This also allows the atria to contract at the same time and the ventricles to contract at the same time, but not the atria contracting with the ventricles. We will discuss action potentials in another video. Let's take a closer look at the sequence that the conduction system fires in and how this conduction system works to allow the heart to beat the way that it does. The signaling for the cardiac conduction system begins at the sinoatrial or SA node. This node is located in the right atrial wall just below or inferior to the superior vena cava. The SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. It sets the rhythm for the heart's contractions. Impulses from the autonomic nervous system and hormones from the blood, such as epinephrine, can modify the timing and strength of each heartbeat, but they cannot establish the fundamental rhythm. This is because this is the job of the SA node. The cells of the SA node do not have a stable resting potential. They spontaneously depolarize, which is known as pacemaker potential. When this pacemaker potential reaches threshold, it will trigger an action potential. Each action potential that arises from the SA node will spread throughout both atria, and this causes both atria to contract at the same time. The signal causes the muscle fibers in the atria to depolarize, resulting in the simultaneous contraction of all the muscle fibers affected, in this case, both atria. 
So when the signal gets sent from the SA node, it moves through both atria and it causes the muscle cells in both atria to depolarize and it results in a contraction. So they will actually contract at the same time. This allows the blood to move from the atria into the ventricles and again that happens at the same time. By moving through the muscle fibers in the atria, this action potential is going to be sent to the next node, which is called the atrioventricular or AV node. This node is located in the interatrial septum, the septum that separates both atria. The AV node acts as a gateway. It briefly delays the signal to allow the ventricles to fill completely with blood from the atria. This delay ensures efficient blood pumping. From the AV node, the action potential enters into the atrioventricular or AV bundle, also known as the bundle of His. This is where the action potential is sent from the atria now to the ventricles. The action potential then splits into the right and left bundle branches. This then sends the action potential into each ventricle. The signal then ends in the Purkinje fibers, which are spread throughout the ventricles. These fibers transmit the impulse quickly and efficiently, causing the ventricles to contract from the bottom up. Once the signal is spread throughout the ventricles, the ventricles will contract simultaneously. This pushes the blood towards the semilunar valves. On the right side of the heart, this is going to push blood through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk. Eventually that blood will go to the lungs to be oxygenated. On the left side of the heart, it will push it through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta and then to the rest of the body. Both ventricles will contract at the same time. After contraction, the heart muscle cells need to reset for the next cycle. This is why the ventricles are relaxing while the atria are contracting and vice versa. This process repeats in a continuous cycle, ensuring that blood is pumped efficiently throughout the circulatory system to supply oxygen and nutrients to all parts of the body. Since these action potentials that travel through the heart to make it contract are electrical signals, we can detect these electrical currents through electrodes that are placed on the body's surface. An electrocardiogram, which is abbreviated ECG or EKG, is a recording of the electrical changes that occur in the heart. The electrodes are placed at six different positions on the chest, arms, and legs. These electrodes pick up the electrical signals generated by the heart, which are then amplified and displayed as a series of waves on a graph. The EKG consists of several waves and intervals that correspond to different phases of the cardiac cycle. There are three waves that can be seen on the EKG. The first wave is the P wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization, which is the electrical signal that causes the atria to contract. It's usually a small upright wave on the EKG. The QRS complex seen next represents ventricular depolarization, which is the electrical signal that causes the ventricles to contract. It's more significant and complex than the P wave. And finally, the T wave. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization, which is the resetting of the ventricle's electrical state after contraction. It is a slightly rounded wave. There are two segments seen on the EKG. The first segment, the PR segment, measures the time it takes for the electrical impulse to travel from the SA node through the atria and reach the AV node. It reflects the delay at the AV node, allowing the ventricles to fill with blood. And then there's the ST segment. The ST segment follows the QRS complex and represents the period when the ventricles are fully depolarized and ready to contract. 
The EKG is closely linked to the cardiac conduction system because it records the electrical signals generated by this system. Let's put it all together. The sinoatrial, or SA node, spontaneously depolarizes and sends the action potential through the cardiac muscle in both atria. The atrial muscle fibers depolarize and the P wave appears in the EKG because of this electrical activation in the atria. Right after the P wave, the atria contract at the same time. This pushes blood from the atria into the ventricles. The PR segment reflects the time it takes for the electrical signal to travel from the SA node to the AV node. The action potential travels from the AV node to the bundle of his, to the left and right bundle branches, and then to the Purkinje fibers. Because of this signal traveling, depolarization progresses down the interventricular septum, then upward and outward from the apex, producing the QRS complex that corresponds to this electrical activation of the ventricles. During this time, atrial repolarization is occurring, but it cannot be seen on the EKG because of the large QRS complex. Contraction of the ventricles occurs just after the QRS complex, during the ST segment. This pushes blood through the semilunar valves into either the pulmonary trunk or the aorta. The ventricles then repolarize in preparation for the next heartbeat. This is represented by the T wave. After the T wave begins, the ventricles relax. Briefly, at this point, the atria and ventricles are relaxed at the same time, and then the P wave appears again, repeating the cycle. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope this gives you a better understanding of how the cardiac conduction system works and how we can see that on an EKG. If you found this video intriguing and educational, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button for more easy to understand and engaging science content. And let us know in the comments what other topics you'd like to explore in the future.